Hey everybody, welcome back again. Um, so we got another video here. Uh, this time it's on a GE fridge, um, side by side, obviously. Now, the issue that we're having, and if you have this issue, well, I'm gonna run through it here with you and, and uh, maybe you can figure out yours from what I, what I do here, but um, it's plugged in right now. Uh, we have light on. Um, we have no display. I have power up to the display. I just tested that. Um, and there's there's no output whatsoever. You can't hit the buttons. It doesn't do anything. Um, so we're going to head to the back and figure out what's going on with this thing. All right. So we're here at the back. Um, so I've checked that I got power coming in. Um, just on the power plug right here. Just checking for voltage. I got... Um, 120 coming in, 123 coming in. Um, this goes directly up to this board. Now this board has had a lot of issues with G, uh, for GE in the past. So um, first thing I'm going to check is the the fuse on this board. I just want to make sure it's okay because they blow sometimes. Um, but I'm going to unplug it first, and then we can test. A um, bunch of things on this board. I've already checked. I do have power coming into the board. I don't know if you can see that at all. So we got 124 volts. Hopefully you can get that. So we got power coming into this board, but uh, we we only have power out. To the lights inside the fridge we don't seem to have power to the fan back here to the compressor back here um, to that board up there or um, the buttons or anything on that board so let's unplug it and we'll test uh, test this fuse here make sure it's still good okay so what we're going to do is put our meter on resistance we're checking for resistance across this little fuse here. So you just put your leads across the fuse and it reads 0, 0.0000, which is what we want to see on there. If it would read OL like it is right now, um, then we know that that fuse is blown. So if the fuse is good and the board has power coming into it, um, we're losing power somewhere. So I think this board's probably not putting out power like it's supposed to be, but I want to check a couple other things just to make sure um, that it is just the board that's, that's kind of screwed here. Okay, so I checked for power coming out to the compressor, and um, every once in a while it is sending power out to the compressor. So at least one part of the board <laughs> is all right. Um, but I wanted to check the actual compressor to see uh, if there's anything going on there. At this point, you know you're looking at a board replacement. But um, if something bigger like the compressor's toast or something like that, we're not going to bother trying to fix this thing. So I want to check out as much as I can. Um, just with the power still unplugged and see what we can, uh, see how much we can test here, I guess. So I'm gonna take this relay. I know it's kind of hard to, to see. It's tough to actually get in there. So we're gonna grab this relay and capacitor, take off, that's the capacitor there. And just pull that relay straight back. You got to wiggle it a little bit to get it off the, the prongs, but that's it right there. So what we want to check, first of all, is the actual compressor, because that's the biggest component that if it fails, we're not fixing. We're not fixing anything here. It's just too expensive of a fix um, to do. 
if you have other issues like the board and things like that. So I'm going to check from pin to pin on the actual compressor. So there's three pins. I can show you the relay here. So this plugs around to the compressor. So there's three pins. It actually sits like that. There's two down below and one up top here. So I want to check um, from this pin to that pin, this pin to that pin, every pin to the opposite pin, um, or to the other pin, I guess, and see what my resistance values are. So depending on which way this compressor was wired, um, you'll have a run winding, a start winding, and just a neutral or common, I guess you'd call it. Um, so checking from one to the other, you should have, I believe it's probably about six, five, six, something like that on here. Um, from one side to the other, you'd have three, four. But when you add the, the, those sums up together, it'll equal the total of the resistance value across the other pins. So I know that's kind of tough to <laughs> explain that any better, but I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If I can get my hands in there, Let's slide this over here so you guys can still see that. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. All right. So from the far bottom pin to the top one, you gotta make sure your fingers aren't on your meter leads or it'll read the resistance through you. Okay, so 6.4 from the far bottom one to the top. Go from the close bottom one to the top. And we get 4.2. So I'm expecting somewhere around 10 if I go from the bottom to the bottom. And we're getting 10.3, which is good. Um, that doesn't mean, that just more or less means the internal wiring um, inside the compressor is good. But there's one more check that you have to check for wiring. You put your meter lead on one of those pins and then touch it um, to the actual case of the compressor. A lot of times you gotta scratch away some some of the black paint that's on there, but you should be getting absolutely no um, resistance. I mean, you're just kind of jumping around, which is not a good sign. Okay, that's good. So we got OL on um, all the pins. So that's good. That means our compressor, it can still be seized inside, I guess, but electrically it's doing okay. So let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so if you find that you have no display, but you seem to have power at the rear board, Power comes down through a plug um, underneath that fridge, the, the freezer fridge door. It comes down through the bottom hinge. So check that connection first. Um, but once you get up here, and even if you have, you know, one of these buttons isn't working or something like that, um, unplug the fridge. There's these two little tabs up here that you push them in which I've already done on this guy. I just had one kind of sitting there. And this is your board here. So you can check that the connections are tight, which I don't think I've ever seen a loose connection. This one's got some fuzz in it, which I don't really <laughs> need in there. Um, but there's another fuse right here. So we can check this fuse to see if this board is okay. So I'll just grab my meter here. 
And we can check that. So we're going to put it on resistance again. And this thing's got a magnet attached to it, which is so nice. Okay, so there are leads across the fuse. And we got nothing. So this fuse is blown, even though it doesn't really look like it. Usually you can actually see it blow, um, but it's definitely blown electrically. It's, uh, it's toast. So <clears throat> we have a rear board issue and a front board issue. Um, yeah, at this point, I think it's uh, just about time for this fridge to to go to the dump. Um, the rear boards, I was having problems still getting those boards. Um, these front boards, I haven't tried in a while, but it was starting to get pretty sparse. The problem is, is once a machine gets to about eight to 10 years old, uh, parts get harder and harder to find. So this guy's gotta be uh, closer to 15 years old. Um, so yeah, parts are, especially like that rear board, I changed hundreds of those things. So whatever was out in the industry is what was out there. Um, you can still run your model number and, and check to see if you know you can get parts like this. But um, yeah, it, it gets tough, tough to find. So anyway, that is all for the diagnostic as to why this thing won't run. Um, there's not much more we really need to do. We've already got two boards down. We know the compressor electrically is good, but it could be seized. Um, the homeowner had said that it sounded like the compressor was trying to start. It would start for a second and then go out. So usually something like that is the run winding inside the compressor. Um, it's testing good right now, so I'm not sure what the heck's going on there, but um, yeah, anyway, that's how you uh, go about diagnosing um, your GE fridge. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully your fridge isn't doing quite what this thing was doing. Um, if you have one board go down, it's, you know, if you can still find it, then yeah, it's, it's worth it to, to fix it. I think these are still um, part of the older generation of, of uh, fridges that tended to run for the 20, 25 years. So um, if you're only at low 15, I think you could get, you know, an extra time out of it anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, there's, there's other issues with this fridge and I'll, I'll bring out a couple of the videos and, and uh, let you know about those things. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a good day.